girls' pockets are a lot different than guys' pockets. We don't have those deep pockets. All right. Can you all hear me? All right. Okay. So before we get started, I want to have somebody pray. Open us up in prayer and ask the Lord to bless this time, to anoint it. Hopefully we apply it to our lives. So, is there any volunteers who wants to pray? You want to pray? I kept looking at you. Amen. Okay, so tonight I'm going to do a devotion on something that we battle every day of our lives and something that we face every day of our lives. So that's why I thought it would be a good devotion. Kind of went back and forth between, you know, doing it on something of the crucifixion, obviously, since it's Good Friday. And I wasn't getting anywhere. I'd study and study, and then it kept going back to this. And I kept praying about it. I was like, well, this must be what the Lord wants everybody to hear. So I'm going to be talking about how to properly handle your feelings. So this is something, especially as women, that we deal with on a daily basis. But not just women, but as Christians in general, we're going to have to learn how to properly handle our feelings because feelings are very powerful. And um, I wrote down John 3.16 because obviously uh, love is a feeling and God Almighty set his only begotten son off of a feeling. That's how powerful feelings can be. So I think... And I know that the Lord wants us to have the recipe for success on feelings because sometimes we get out of balance with our feelings. And I get out of balance, and you guys get out of balance. So this devotion is just going to be kind of talking about how do we get them balanced? Because feelings are not always a bad thing. Obviously, the Lord has feelings. He created us to have feelings. And sometimes I feel like, since we're Bible believers now, we feel like we're not supposed to have feelings. <laughs> Any feeling that we get is bad, and we shouldn't have feelings, but that is not the truth. We're supposed to have feelings. And the Lord said that he's near people who are brokenhearted. So that's a feeling. He's near people who are contrite in spirit. That's a feeling. So... We just need to know how to properly handle them. And that's what tonight's going to be about. So if you guys want to go ahead and turn to Proverbs 11, that's where we're going to start in your Bible. Proverbs 11. And we're going to be looking at verse 1. Proverbs 11.1 1 says, A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So you need a balance to everything in life, not just your feelings, but most importantly your feelings, you need a balance on them. But you could go to music, anything that you deal with in life, you can overdo it. We're human beings, we tend to overdo it. So if you have a balance, when you put more in one, 
one goes up and one goes down, right? Or it goes like this. So over here, we're going to have when your feelings are too much, then they start to control your life. But then when you suppress your feelings, that's not good either. So we have to get it balanced out so where we have the right amount of feelings, godly feelings, proper feelings. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to read our Bible first and foremost so then we know our feelings are coming from the right place. Um, and I'm going to get to that in just a minute about the recipe for success for getting your feelings right. Um, but let's go ahead and turn to Romans 12. I'm going to talk about just a little bit about suppressing your feelings. Once again, as Bible believers, um, we try to hide our feelings a lot. And, you know, we have a lot of knowledge. We have a lot of doctrine. We know the answer to everything, you know, we think. But if you don't have the feeling behind it, you don't have the zeal behind it, then it doesn't amount to a lot. And I know in my life, there's been times I've been in church, and I'm sitting there in church, and the Holy Spirit, you know, you're listening to the message, and you're kind of getting into that zone where you're blocking everybody else out, and you feel like you're going into another place, and you're just listening, and eating up the Word of God, and you're like, yeah, that's me, yeah, that's me. And you're getting it, and then you start getting a feeling like, I need to go to the altar, or I just want to weep at the altar, I just want to cry out to God, you're having a moment with the Lord, and that's a good feeling. But then the devil comes along, or your flesh rises up, and that feeling that you're having goes down like this, you suppress it. That's what we don't want to do. That's the suppression of feelings I'm talking about. When the Holy Spirit gives you a feeling, and you're, you're ready about to do it, you're about to run the bases in church, or you're about to scream about how great God is, and then all of a sudden you bring it back down, you're like, oh wait, there's people here. <laughs> and then the feeling's gone, you can't get it back. You just throw a wet blanket on the fire. And it's like, okay. And you try the whole service to get it back, but you can't. So we don't want to suppress the feelings that God gives us. And we don't want to suppress that with people either. To show emotion because God wants us not to be robots and I think sometimes we just get in the zone of okay don't show any emotion you just got to be this robot be this brick wall but that's not how God created us so if you look at Romans 12 15 this is the word of God talking to you about this Romans 12 15 the Lord says rejoice with them that do rejoice. Simple, okay? And weep with them that weep. I feel like that's not like algebra. If somebody, something good happens to somebody, they're rejoicing, you should rejoice with them. If something bad happens to someone, when they're weeping, they've lost a loved one or lost their job, something's going on in their life, you should weep with them. Emotions bring you together with somebody or connect you with someone. And that's why the Lord has emotions with us. I mean, I can't imagine going through life without emotions, without feeling. And that's what most people want. That's why people get depressed because they don't have, they don't want to feel and they put the wall around their heart and guard it so tightly that they just don't want to live anymore. The Lord made you to feel and to live and to have emotions. And I know sometimes we look back on our lives and we wish, I wish I didn't have emotions at that part of my life. You know, when somebody rips your heart out or, you know, you're heartbroken and you're like, man, emotions are awful. <laughs> I've been there before in my life. You're like, why did God create this? <laughs> But when you have good days, you know, then you're like, wow, I like having emotions, you know, knowing that God loves me, that he died for me. I like having emotions because you feel that. 
Everybody wants to feel things. So I went over the suppression part. I just did that a little bit because I feel like we probably do the other one more where we let our feelings dictate our life and our decisions. So that's going to be a majority of the devotion is the balance over here where whatever you feel is how you make your decisions. That would be me a lot of the time. If I'm feeling mad, my decision is going to come out mad. If I'm feeling sad, my decision is going to come out sad or happy or whatever I'm feeling in that moment. But we can't let those feelings dictate our decisions in life. And I'm going to show you the secret recipe now for that. And if you want to go ahead and turn to John 17 while I'm talking... There's three simple steps to put you in check to make sure that you're not putting your feelings above the facts because you need to have the facts first. So the recipe is going to be, number one, get the facts. Number two, put faith in the facts. And number three, then, is your feelings. So this is important that you get them in that order and that one is not omitted, one is not put above the other. It needs to be facts, faith, feelings. And that's what we're going to be going over tonight. And you ask, well, we're going to start on number one. Where do I get the facts? Where do I get the truth? I think all of us in here know where to get the truth. But I'm going to show you in John 17:17, 17, 17, where is the truth? It says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay, that was pretty simple. So we found out where our facts are. The King James Bible is where our facts are. So if you have any doubts in life, any questions, you're going to be making some decisions, you go to the Bible. And if you're reading that on a daily basis, if you're ingesting that, eating it up, that's going to help in your decision-making process. So then when those feelings come, you're like, nope, I know 1 John 1, 9 says this, or I know that John 3, 16 says this, or whatever Bible verse you need for your life is going to pop up in your head. So that's first, is the facts. And what I'm going to go over as an example is 1 John 1, 9. So turn there. <clears throat> as an example of how to use this, because I'm sure we've all been here in our life, 1 John 1, 9. I'm going to go over what the Bible says, which would be the facts. So in 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, so we just read the facts. The fact is, if we confess our sins, the Lord said he would forgive us and cleanse us. And that's a fact. Now, what we need to do next is the second step is faith. Because if you just have number one and you don't have number two, this stuff is not going to work. And I'm going to tell you why. Because I'm sure you all have felt shame and guilt after you've sinned. Am I right? You've all been there, and that's good. That's a good feeling. And then you go and confess it to the Lord. You get right about it. But then you still feel shame and guilt. How many have been there? Even after you've confessed it. You say, well, why do I have that? Why? I did what the Bible said. Why do I still feel shame and guilt? The Lord said he would cleanse me. Well, that's because you're missing number two. 
So let's turn to 1 Thessalonians 2.13. This is a common question I always ask myself. Like, I did what the Bible said. I got the facts down, and I did exactly what God told me to do, and I still feel this way. Well, that's why we're here to help. Your feelings are not right feelings because you don't have number two, and that's faith. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. First Thessalonians 2.13 says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. And here's the part, the best part, which effectually worketh also in you that what? Believe. So the Bible is only effective if you believe it. So you can quote 1 John 1, 9 all day. You can go and confess your sins to God, and the fact is that he did forgive you. But that doesn't change your feelings because you're not having faith in what he said. And that, this is like the most important step. The facts is number one because you have to have faith in the facts. If you don't have the facts, then you could have faith in humanity, yourself. You could have faith in anything. But you have to have the facts first. And then once you get the facts, you have to have faith. Because the devil's going to come at you right after you get up from praying, confessing your sins, and he's going to say, you're not really forgiven. After what you've done, and he puts you right back into that same cycle Day in, day out, you're just thinking about what you've done and not about what the Lord's done. So let's turn to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. This is why faith is so important to go along with your facts. We know that the Word of God is our sword, right? And then faith is our shield. So you need your sword and your shield to fight your feelings. Okay, so we're going to look at Ephesians 6, and we're going to start at verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith. Why? Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Okay, so it's not just enough to have your sword. You have to have your shield, too. If you've noticed, in verse 17, it does say you have to have your sword, sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That is your only offensive weapon in the whole entire list, is your sword. Everything else is defensive. Your helmet, your breastplate, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, that's all defensive. The only thing in that list is your sword that's offensive. You use your sword to attack. But then you're going to have to have a time where you put up your shield and rest. And then that quenches when the devil comes. You attack, put up your shield. Attack with the word of God. Then when he comes at you, you put up your shield. I believe what God said. You say it, I believe. That's what quenches his fiery darts. And you have to have both of those. I remember, just as an illustration, when I was younger, I used to play gladiator video games. I know you're probably like, wow, I didn't know that about you. Well, (laughs) I was a weird kid sometimes. But I liked to play them. So as a kid, you know, you have your gladiator arena. You get all your helmet. You get all your armory. 
you get your sword and your shield, and then you go out and fight your opponent, you know, just like back in the old days. But on the video game, as a kid, you don't strategize how to kill the opponent. You just use your sword. You just keep hitting the button. You're like, okay, if I just use it enough, he's going to die. So I would go out there, go to my opponent, and I'd just keep hitting the sword button. And I'm like, okay, this is working. But then I realized the little green bar at the top of the screen, that was my stamina, went like that after just two strikes. And then my, my person was tired, and then I would lose because I was too tired to put up my shield or my sword because I just used my sword all the time. And So I was like, I'm going to have to figure out how to work this game. So I got a little smart. And so I was like, I have a shield button, so maybe I should start using that. So the next time I went out, I did like two strikes with my shield, I mean my sword, and then I put up my shield right after that. And then I saw my little green bar go back up. And then the opponent hit my shield. And then I'd put it back down, like, okay, this is working. So I'd hit him again, and I'd put up my shield real quick. And then he'd hit on my shield. And that green bar, it would go down for just a minute, and it would come back up as my energy. It's like, hey, I'm getting it. So I did that combination both times throughout the whole game, and I won. Because I learned, okay, if you just get your sword all the time, you're going to get tired and worn out. If you just use scripture all the time against the devil and don't ever have faith, you're going to get tired and worn out. You have to use scripture and believe it. Because if you don't, you're going to lose the fight. You can quote scripture at the devil all day. He knows scripture himself. He can quote it back to you. But you have to say, no, I know what God said. I believe it. Amen. You know, and then you get your sword out again. As it is written, like the Lord said in Matthew 4, as it is written, and he believed it. He's God. He believed it. <laughs> That's what we need to do in our battle with our feelings. So when you confess your sins, and you're like, okay, First John 1, 9, quote it to yourself. He said, that if I confess my sins, he would forgive me. So then when the devil comes, and he's going to come, you confess, you do your sword, and then you put up your shield. Say, no, the Lord said, and then you drop it. The devil starts knocking at the door. You say, Lord, it's for you. Lord, open the door. It's not for me, because you can't fight the devil. You can't. Ephesians says in verse 12, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. You can't fight that in the flesh. And, you know, you get in this la-la land or this zone of thinking, if I just do this, I know that I can fight the devil with this. It's not going to work. You have to have your facts and your faith and then you'll get a feeling. You'll feel accomplished. You're like, I did it God's way. I did it, and it works. And just to um, close a little bit in conclusion, I'm going to close here. Uh, turn to James. I'll tell you one more story. And we're going to close with James 1.12. Um, the, the few times in my life, I don't do all the time because I'm a human being, and I get tricked just like everybody else, and I go with my feelings and not what the Word of God said. Um, but I can remember going to work one day, and I remember it very vividly, because, you know, when you have good days and you get victory, you're like, hey, this was a good day, I remember it. And then, like, the rest of your day was good, because you got victory that morning. Um, but I was having trouble, you know, how the devil will work you over on worst-case scenarios and what-ifs and well, what if this happened, what would you do? Or, you know, I'm sure this person's doing that. Or, you know, they just plants the seed in your mind. And you get start just getting into this zone of, you know, just everything's awful. The, my whole windshield is clean, but I have that one bug, and I want to focus on the one bug on my windshield. You ever had those days? And you're like, how do I get out of this? <laughs> so I was like, okay, you know what I'm going to do? 
I got up that morning. I was like, I'm going to try. This may sound crazy, but I'm going to try and do what God said to do. Because he said it would work. And I, you know, the, past, the couple weeks before this day, I remember quoting scripture. It didn't work. I would quote scripture. I'm like, why is this not working? Well, because I wasn't believing. I would just quote it, but I didn't believe what I was saying. You have to have the faith to believe when the devil attacks. So I got to Kunkel's that morning. It's cutting my lettuce, cutting my tomatoes. Started to hit me again. Like, oh, look what they're, they're not even doing anything over there and you're working this hard. Like, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> you ever been there or is it just me? <laughs> you think that you're doing everything, everybody's lazy and doing nothing to help you. And uh, worst case scenario is you're just hateful with everybody. But I was like, okay, I started hitting it. And it was coming on me, and I just, a mental note. I was like, okay, when this happened, I said I was going to do this. So I quoted a scripture that was appropriate. That's what I was going through. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And you know what? I believed it, and I went on my way. I didn't get attacked for the rest of the day. Like, hey, this worked. I went and cut my lettuce, my tomatoes. I had a good day. I was actually nice to the customers and you know, asked if they needed anything. But um, it's amazing. You can tell the difference between carnal feelings and spiritual feelings. Once you've been there, I know it's hard when you're in the flesh because you're like, hey, this feels great. You're feeding your flesh. You're doing all this fun stuff. But when you've gotten the spiritual feelings before, and you compare it, you're like, I know this is not spiritual. I want the spiritual stuff. Because it blocks everything else out. You just focus on the Lord, and nothing bothers you. It's a weird feeling. I can't explain it if you've never had it. But nothing else bothered me that day. Everybody could have been just complete heathens, and I would have been all right with it. <laughs> you know? So the thing that we need to focus on is, well, why is this even worth it? At the end of the day, why am I taking all this time to fight? Why am I taking all this time to fight my feelings? Because my feelings feel good sometimes. When I want to smack somebody, I want to smack somebody. And I feel like in the moment, that would feel really good. And I would feel accomplished. You know, somebody's getting on your nerves. Or, you know, if you're in food, customer service, like I am. Somebody starts complaining about, you know, one little tomato on their sandwich or something. You get your hand ready. <laughs> And sometimes in your mind, you play it over. You wish you could just rewind it, like do it, and then rewind it. <laughs> just, to, just to feel good. But you have to learn how to control those feelings. Obviously, we would not have a job if we acted like that. So, same thing with the Lord. When you feel something, you have to have the facts. Go over in your mind, what are the facts? What does Scripture say? Then if it's contrary to what you're feeling, like, okay, Cast it down. I know that's not right. And you have to go with the facts. And I taught on that before with like friendships. It doesn't feel right to wound your friend, right? That doesn't feel right. But if you stick with it, it is worth it. That's anything in the Bible. If you stick with how the Bible told you to do something, it is worth it. You have to push those feelings aside because you have to look at the end. The end of the matter is God's going to bless what you did. It's easy to give in in the moment. But you have to look at the end. And that's what we're looking at in James 1.12. Feelings of temptation just to give in, like, oh, I just want to do this so bad. You know, it's just easier to give in to my feelings. But you have to look at the end of the matter. You have to look and see what you're going to be missing out on. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried... He shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So you have to look at the end of the matter. Yes, would it be easier to smack somebody? Yes, in the moment it would be easier, but the repercussions of that is not worth it. This is worth it. Verse 12 is worth it. Knowing that you put your feelings down for the Lord's sake. Knowing that 
you went with the Bible for the Lord's sake, and you believe that he's going to work it out. And in the end, you'll receive a crown of life. And we can cast those at the Lord's feet. Can you imagine one day the one who created you, the one who died for you, who's done everything for you with all the blessings, don't you want to do something for him? I do. This life, I mean, I've had a lot of deaths surrounding me this week, and it makes you think, like, wow, okay, I need reality check, reel it back in. I need to vow my life to the Lord. I need to serve the Lord because this life will soon be past, and only what's done for Christ will last. And we have to remember that, and we have to remember a crown of life is waiting for us. We stick with the book, cast our feelings down, give it to the Lord, and it'll all be good. Amen. We'll have a crown waiting for us. We just have to look at the end, look at what the Lord's done for us in this life. But, boy, we got a whole other life waiting for us up there, and we have to set our affections on those things. So that's all I have for tonight. I just pray that it was a blessing. Pray that it helps you when those feelings arise, that you will be able to remember Scripture. Get a ton of Scripture memorized. Because believe it or not, that Scripture that you memorize is going to come up to the surface on your little Rolodex in your mind. When stuff comes up, you're like, wow, I actually did remember that Bible verse. You can't memorize something that you've never read. You can't retain something that you've never read. So read your Bible, even if you think you're not getting anything out of it. It'll come up to the surface and put up your shield. Amen. Quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. Tell the Lord how much you love him and how much you want him and need him and thank him. If the Lord's dealt with you, then do what the Lord has you to do. Surrender your life to the Lord. That's where it's at. always like to give an altar call for you just never know how the Lord's dealing with people and putting people under conviction and it's all through that word of God little Emily comes up there and the power of God gets on her she starts teaching the word of God and bragging on the Lord you have a receptive heart and ask the Lord to help you he'll help you If you're not saved, don't know for sure you're going to heaven, you could get that settled tonight. Most important decision you'll ever make is receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's how you get to heaven. He paid the price. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. He did all the work on Calvary's cross. Approximately 2,000 years ago, God himself came down here and died on the cross and shed his precious blood for our sins. That's what we celebrate. And he rose again, and we rejoice. We rejoice, and he's coming back. That'll make you happy. He's coming back for us. But if you don't have a home in heaven, you don't know for sure, you can get that settled tonight. It's offered to everyone here.
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Bow our heads. Give somebody an opportunity. I know how it is when you sit in the pew. It's just different things we think about, but we need to think about the Lord. Is there anybody here tonight who would like to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior? You're among friends tonight. Anybody here? If you're saved, say amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Never cease to amaze me, the Lord's love for us. And you ladies are very important in the body of Christ. Amen. So don't let the devil tell you anything different. The Lord loves you. Amen. I'm always amazed. Emily does a good job. The Lord really uses her. And uh, that can be anybody. If the Lord gets in it, it gets good. And uh, it's all based on that Word of God. That's where it's all at, the Word of God. And so how many of you got a devotion going on with the Word, reading the Word? But I know and you know that the devil tries to keep you away from that. He gets you in a rush, gets you in the rat race, and tries to keep you. But every time you put the Lord first, it works. You get the facts, and that made sense tonight. You put your faith in those facts. A lot of times we get the facts, but we don't really believe it. But when you believe it, man, there's, like you're saying, the spiritual aspect of it where the Lord just sends down his love and grace to you. You can't explain it to somebody. You try to explain it, but they never experienced it. They get the carnal stuff. But, you know, they try to crank it up, manufacture things. It just doesn't work. Once you get the real stuff, you're like, oh, my God, this is it. Can I, can I stay here for a little bit, Lord? I don't want to go back out there right now. And the Lord will do that for you. But we got to seek him. Amen. All right. Does anybody got anything to add to that? Did you get fed tonight? All right. You got fed spiritually? Amen. It feels good to get fed by the Lord. Amen. It really does. Praise his great name. All right. Let's stand. We'll say a prayer. Get you out some good fellowship out there. Lord God, we thank you for being our God. Thank you so much for speaking to your servants tonight. And that's what we yearn for and long for, for you to speak to your servants. We're your servants. And we thank you so much for your love for us. And thank you for the message we heard tonight, the teaching. And uh, we know it comes from you, and we just give you all the glory and praise. You're a great God, and Lord, thank you for reassuring us that you care for us and you want to meet with us if we seek you and put our get the facts from the King James Bible and put our faith in those facts the feeling we get is just unbelievable how how you can just comfort us and just give us strength Lord and thank you for the hope we have we know we're going to spend all eternity with you and bless the fellowship Lord and uh, just get us thinking right and just thinking about you and uh, play, thank you for the food, providing the food. Pray you bless the food. Nourish our body so we serve you better, Lord. And it's in Jesus' powerful name we pray. And all God's people said amen. Amen. All right.